When the last drop of blood had dried to a black crust on the cave floor, the refugees gathered together to decide what to do next. Hala was talking to the Kauai chiefs. They say that those who escaped have left one of their vehicles above, to watch the exit. Probably hoping we'll jump out into their sights. Is there another way out? Luke asked tiredly. Yes, close by, one of the chiefs, ignoring its badly burnt arm, mumbled urgently at Hala, he wants to know if there's anything they can do to help us. They can show us that other way out, Luke informed her. They've done enough. We have to hurry. We may have delayed too long already. Too long for what, the princess inquired curiously. We'll be well away from here by the time Vader can return with reinforcements. She looked thoughtful. I don't think he'll trouble the cow way. It's us and the crystal he wants. That's what I'm talking about, Leia, he replied worriedly. I don't think Vader's gone back to the town. He pointed. When he passed from my mind, or rather, when the disturbance he generates in the force passed from my mind, he was traveling that way. Not back toward the town, but toward the temple. That's ridiculous, Hala objected strenuously. He has no idea where the temple of Pomajima is. Vader is much more attuned to the force, albeit its dark side, than I am, Hala. It's likely that he can sense the crystal's natural disturbance. It would be faint, but someone as powerful as Vader could barely detect it. And he has more than that to go on. We were traveling in as straight a line as possible. He needs merely to plot along it and hunt for the crystal's effect when he angles off his course. He mustn't reach the temple before us. He started off up the tunnel. Leia was quickly alongside, matching him stride for anxious stride. She beat at the dry cave air with a clenched fist. I had him, Luke. He was standing there in my scope and I missed him. She hiked on, brooding on the nearness of the thing. I was too excited, too nervous. I didn't take enough time and I made a bad shot. Your shooting, what I could see of it, he countered, a mic jealously, was excellent. Better than I could have done. Leia said nothing for a moment, then added deferentially, I couldn't have survived that kind of intense infighting. Who taught you to use a lightsaber like that? Kenobi. Luke nodded. I owe everything to that old man, and wherever he's gone to, he knows it. He patted the shaft of his father's weapon reassuringly. If we do catch up with Vader, she went on, and we must, you're going to need both your skill with the saber and the force. If only I'd taken more time. Luke shushed her and the others. They were nearing the exit to the surface. Dim, misty air filtered down to them. Even that dank light was intoxicating after so many days underground, traveling by the glow of unnatural vegetation. Several bodies lay scattered about, Imperial troopers too badly wounded to regain the surface. The two Kauai who'd come along directed them into a nearby crevice in the wall. Both Yuzum grunted and had to inhale for all they were worth in order to fit through. They emerged behind a clump of thick brush at least 20 meters from the main entrance. One of the cow waypointed, indicating the location of the armored vehicle on guard. Luke saw the squat shape, its muzzle angled directly down the mouth of the tunnel they'd been standing in only moments before. He shuddered. With soft mumbles and alien gestures, the cow way took their leave, vanishing back down the hole. Luke crawled on his belly, freeing the exit for those behind him. When all five were once again on the surface of Mimban, Luke turned to crawl clear. Just a darn minute, Luke boy. Halla whispered. Do you think you can catch up to this Vader on foot? Luke paused, returned to stare at the silent crawler poised over the cowway exit. All right, so what do we do, Halla? I agree, we have to have transportation. But that armed crawler happens to be full of Imperial troops. Halla studied the vehicle. Its upper port is wide open, big enough for two men. I can see two, no, one trooper with his head exposed. Probably giving information to those below. The head disappeared. He's gone now. 
We should get in the branches hanging over it. Then what? The princess asked. We jump inside. Listen, the old woman protested, I can't think of everything, can I? I don't know, drop an anti-personnel charge down them, or something. Wonderful, the princess quipped. She looked from Halla to Luke. Now if one of you two magicians will use the force to conjure up a convenient canister of explosive. I'll volunteer to do the dropping. She folded her arms, gazed questioningly at them. Personally, I think I'm pretty safe in volunteering. Luke? He wasn't looking at her. We don't have any explosives, true, but we have something close. She turned, saw what he was staring at, and found she had to agree. The Imperial Sergeant had been fortunate to escape the underground ambush with his life, and he knew it. If he'd had any voice in the matter he never would have led his men beneath the surface. On Mimbin, he was acutely uncomfortable whenever he had to leave the relative familiarity of the towns and venture out into the bog-ridden countryside. It had been a terrible battle, terrible. They'd been overwhelmed and nearly wiped out to the last trooper. So many things had gone wrong. The outcome of the engagement was decided in the first few minutes, when total surprise had belonged to the enemy. Even when it had dawned on the detachment that they were under attack, they still hadn't responded in the fashion Imperial troops were famous for. There was no blaming the men, really. They were so accustomed to dealing with the subservient, Pacific Greenies that the concept of a fighting Mimbanite was unbelievable to most of them. They'd proven unprepared to cope with the reality. Now, as he stared out the foreport at the ominous mouth of the cavern he'd retreated from with the rest of the survivors, he feasted on a single thought. If he knew the captain's supervisor at all, then as soon as he and the Dark Lord Vader returned from their journey, a retaliatory force would be organized. They would return here with heavy weapons, he mused grimly, and roast that cavern until every native male, woman, and infant had been reduced to ashes. Idly, he wondered where Grammel and the Dark Lord had taken themselves so hastily, and shuddered. He had no desire to accompany that tall, black-armored spectral shape anywhere whatsoever. He preferred to speculate on the forthcoming massacre that would take place in the native warrens below. That favorable mental image mitigated his usually brusque call to the man posted in the open turret above. The trooper heard the sergeant's order, turned to call downward that he saw nothing. It was an honest answer, the last one the trooper ever made. In glancing down into the armored crawler he failed to see the bomb that fell from the large tree branch overhead. A little over a meter and a half tall, the bomb was covered with short, bristly fur. It exploded on top of the trooper and yanked him clear of the turret. That left the opening clear for a second bipedal projectile to drop from the mist-enshrouded tree into the vehicle. It too erupted inside the personnel area. Luke, the droids, Halla and the princess watched from nearby, concealed by thick growth. There was a dull rumble as the crawler started moving. A great deal of shouting and screaming, muffled by metal and distance, came from within. Halla sounded worried. They're taking longer than I thought, Luke boy. Are you sure of this? Luke threw her a confident glance before turning his attention back to the crawler, which was now traveling in erratic curves and circles. It was all I could think of, he declared. In several ways this, if it works, is better than using an explosive. For one thing, we won't damage any of the crawler's instruments. No human can stand up to a yuzum in close quarters. Two yuzum in a confined space like that, and he indicated the fitfully twisting vehicle, ought to be irresistible. Several seconds later, the crawler turned sharply to its right. Still traveling slowly, it slammed into a huge pseudocypress. A thick limb fell from the shaken tree. It struck the crawler with a metallic bong, tumbled to the earth. Silence then. The crawler's engine whined, faded, finally stopped. After a few anxious moments Hin emerged from the turret opening, straining at the tight fit, and waved to them. They did it, Luke observed with quiet excitement. The three observers left their place of concealment in the underbrush and hurried across the ground bog. 
Broad, hairy hands extended to help them up the metal sides. Hin grunted something to Luke, who nodded solemnly and turned away. What is it? The princess inquired impatiently. Why can't we go inside? She glanced nervously at the silent, surrounding vegetation. There might be a few stragglers hiding out there. I don't think so, Luke disagreed. Hint suggests we look some other way while he and Key clean out the crawler. What for? She demanded to know. I've seen all kinds of death and plenty recently. As she spoke, Hin reached down and took the first bits of what remained of the crawler's crew. Rose and chucked the double handful over the side. It lay moist and glistening on the damp ground. The princess's face became slightly paler and she turned away to join Luke in contemplating the nearby trees. Several minutes later the ghastly cleanup was finished. They all dropped down into the crawler. Even with two yuzum, they weren't crowded the crawler was designed to carry ten fully armored troops. Less comforting was Luke's first inspection of the control panel. It was more complex than that of an X-wing fighter. Can you drive this? Luke asked Halla, bewildered. She grinned as she slid into the driver's seat, ignoring the stains on the padding. Why, Luke boy, I can operate any hunk of machine on this world. She bent forward, studied the instrumentation and touched something on the rim of the driver's wheel. The engine roared, lights flickered, and the crawler promptly shot full speed backward to crash into a pair of entwined trees. There was a violent crackling noise and then two thunderous, reverberating booms as both bowls fell on top of the idling vehicle. When Luke's ears stopped ringing he shot Halla an accusing stare. She smiled wanly back at him. Of course, she explained a mite lamely, that's not to say a little practice wouldn't smooth our ride. Once more she examined the controls, pursed her lips studiously. Let's see now, there, that's what I missed. Again she activated switches and buttons before touching the control on the wheel's rim. Moving in spasmodic jerks and stops, jumps and lunges, the crawler slid off into the mists. Save the pilot, all other occupants of the vehicle clung to something inflexible. Luke wondered if the trees ahead were as nervous as he was. I'm sorry, my lord, most sorry I am. Captain Supervisor Grammel looked up at Darth Vader from where he sat on one of the open benches of the big troop carrier. Who was to guess they were so well armed, or that the underground abos would put up such a battle? The weapons were of small consequence, Vader growled profoundly. A few guns, all in the hands of wanted criminals. Grammel cringed as the grotesque breath mask dipped close. Admit it, Captain Supervisor. Your troops were inadequately prepared, poorly trained. Discipline and morale were both absent and you were routed by a mob of ignorant savages. They took us completely by surprise, my lord, Grammel argued strenuously. No native group has ever resisted the imperial presence on Mimban before. No native group previously had the benefit of human advice and aid, Vader snapped back. They did not employ wholly aboriginal tactics. You should have recognized the differences early and taken appropriate countermeasures. He looked away from Grammel to gaze significantly across the bogland. I know which parties were responsible for that. When I hold in my hand the balance of the crystal, I will mete out justice accordingly. I'd hoped for that privilege myself, a disgruntled Grammel muttered. Vader turned a cool, metallic stare downward, announced dangerously, you have no privileges, Captain Supervisor Grammel. You have blundered badly. Not critically, I hope, but badly. I curse myself for being fool enough to assume that you knew what you were doing. I told you, my lord, Grammel objected, at once angry and frightened, their surprise was complete. I'm not interested in excuses for debacles, only successful results, declared Vader. Grammel, your existence befouls me. My lord, Grammel babbled desperately, rising from the bench, if I faster than a human I could follow, Vader's lightsaber was up, activated and moving. Grammel's slashed form pitched wildly, stumbled backward and tumbled over the side of the crawler. There was a lull as the stunned driver looked on in terror. Vader whirled, glowered down at him. 
we will travel faster without such dead weight to slow us, trooper. Return to your controls, now. Why yes, my lord, the man gulped, unable to keep from stuttering fearfully. Somehow he forced himself to turn back to the control board of the vehicle. As they moved forward, Vader turned to glance back idly at the receding corpse of Captain Supervisor Grammel. Already jungle scavengers were beginning to emerge from concealment to sniff hopefully at the body. Whoever is your lord now, Vader murmured, it is not I. Removing the shard of kyber crystal from a sealed pocket, he held the glowing crimson splinter before his eyes, swaying slightly. It was there ahead, somewhere ahead. He could sense it. He would find it. Are we still traveling on the right track? A weary layer asked old Halla several days later. All of the crawler's occupants were dirty, discouraged and exhausted from racing non-stop through the misty landscape. Certain of it, Halla replied with disgusting cheerfulness. We're getting close to something, Luke ventured. It's peculiar. I've never felt anything like it before, not remotely. I don't feel anything, except filthy, countered the princess. Leia, Luke began, all I can say is, I know, I know, she interrupted him tiredly, if I were a force sensitive. R2 beeped from the open turret. Luke rushed to the fore viewport, announced in hushed tones, there it is. Rising from the jungle growth ahead of them was a black apparition. A monstrous pyramidal ziggurat, it looked as if it were formed of cast iron. But metal it was not. Instead, the massive edifice had been built of great blocks of some volcanic stone. For all its breadth, it was not very tall. Vines and creepers clung jealously to it in many places. As they ground nearer Luke saw that much of the stone was crumbling to fine powder. Fortunately the entrance was still visible, although the 10-meter-high curved archway was half-collapsed and had filled the passageway with rubble to a height taller than two men. It doesn't look as if anything here has been disturbed for a million years, the princess murmured in awe. All her worries and uncertainties had been dissolved by the actual sight of the legendary temple. Luke was moving rapidly from port to port. Now he turned to look back at her and when he did so, his eyes were shining. You realize, Leia, that Vader isn't here. He isn't here. We've beaten him. Take it easy, Luke boy. Halla advised him cautioningly. We can't be certain of that. I can. I'm certain. He urged him out of the way, mounted the turret ladder and exited from the crawler. It slowed to a stop. When Leia emerged from the turret top he was already walking confidently toward the temple entrance. He's not here, he shouted back to her. There's no sign of a crawler or anything else. We still have to find the crystal, Halla called out to him as she followed Leia to the ground. But Luke's enthusiasm was contagious. She found herself forgetting the Dark Lord, forgetting her own fears and last-minute trepidations. Here was the Temple of Pomojima, the temple she'd been trying to reach for years. Hin and Ki flanked her as they moved toward the entranceway. 3PO and R2 remained to guard the crawler. Despite Luke's assurance that they were alone here, everyone kept a worried eye on the drifting fog. Anything imaginable and many things unimaginable could spring out of that cloaking haze at any minute. Luke was waiting impatiently, standing on the topmost block of the rubble in the entrance. It's light inside, he told them, after peering inside. His gaze went higher and he squinted. Part of the roof's caved in, too, but it looks solid enough. Go ahead, boy, Halla urged him, but quietly quiet. That's all right, he said. Now that they had actually gained the temple, he wasn't about to steal the old woman's dream. This was her right as much as his. So he waited until the others had joined him. In a few moments all were standing silently inside the ancient structure. There were two places above where the soaring, domed roof had fallen in. They admitted sufficient light to illuminate the temple's interior. Piles of broken stone lay splattered beneath each ragged hole. Jungle growth had penetrated inside. Lianas and other parasitic plants lay everywhere, 
extending their tenacious embrace into all corners of the building. They spiraled skyward on the cylindrical bodies of towering obsidian pillars. These unyielding supports boasted intricate carved patterns and designs, whose meaning none now alive could properly appreciate. Each swimming in his or her own thoughts, the five walked across the spacious floor toward the far side of the temple. A colossal statue was seated there against the dark wall. It represented a vaguely humanoid being seated on a carved throne. Leathery wings which might have been vestigial swept out in two awesome arcs to either side of the figure. Enormous claws thrust from feet and arms, the latter clinging to the ends of armrests on the throne. It had no face below slanted, accusing eyes only a mass of magician, carved tentacles. Pomajima, god of the Kyber, Hala whispered, without knowing why she was bothering to whisper. It almost seems familiar, somehow. She chuckled nervously. That's crazy, of course. Then she was pointing excitedly, voice and hand trembling alike with the wonder of it. It's there. I knew it, I knew it. In the center of the gray stone chest of the statue lay a dimly pulsing light the hue of vanity night. The crystal, breathed the princess softly. Halla did not hear her. Mind and gaze remained focused on an obsession become attainable. Luke stopped, his eyes on the movement to the left of the leering stone figure. It was dark back there, and there was no telling how far the darkness stretched. Then they all began backing away slowly. Halla's pistol was the first to be aimed. The creature moving out from behind the statue had a wide, wide mouth fringed with short sharp teeth now open in a Batrachian grin. Small yellow eyes blinked dumbly at them. It moved on ponderous, warty legs like thick tree stumps. Halla fired. The beam of energy had no visible effect on the creature, which continued lumbering toward them. Luke had his own pistol out, as did Leia. All three of them fired. If the joint barrage had any effect it was to irritate the sluggish beast. It blinked blood, continued its bow-legged walk toward them at a faster pace. They continued retreating toward the entrance. Him, Ki, Luke called to the Yuzum. Go back to the crawler, get the rifles. Him chittered a reply, then both Yuzum were racing for the exit. Luke considered the crystal, receding behind the protective bulk of the monster. Taking his lightsaber from his belt, he activated the powerful blue beam and started cautiously forward. Luke, have you lost your mind, the princess shouted. He reflected briefly that it wasn't impossible, and then dismissed the thought. If he paused to do much thinking, the steadily advancing carnivore would have him for a snack. It hesitated within snapping distance, slightly hypnotized by the weaving beam of the saber. Luke lunged forward. The saber contacted the creature's chin. Intense energy punctured a small hole in the wide lower jaw. That produced a dimly outraged moan from the thing. Jaws parted to reveal a gullet high and wide enough to dance in. Luke saw something moving inside. Whether prodded by instinct or a good guess, he threw himself sharply to his left and rolled rapidly. The long pink tongue exploded outward, to pulverize a black boulder which had been just behind him. As he rolled to his feet and continued backing away, the creature spat out chunks of rock. Before Luke could move out of range the thick tongue shot out again. Unable to dodge, he held his saber tightly in front of him. It seemed pitifully inadequate against that pink pseudopod. But the sizzling sound was loud. Apparently he'd contacted sensitive tissue, because the creature let out a throaty yelp. With single-minded determination, it resumed stalking Luke. Death glinted in narrowed yellow eyes. Leia and Halle kept up a steady fire on the massive body, to no effect. Useless, the princess said tightly. She looked toward the entrance. There was no sign of movement there. Hin, she shouted. Ki. No response. They'll get here, Halla advised her. They'd better. Unexpectedly, the monster hopped forward. Horizontal door jaws snapped shut with a ringing thud as Luke ducked beneath the bite. His saber cut a black line across the underside of the jaw as he stumbled clear, 
to bang into one of the thick pillars supporting the roof. One of the gaps in that soaring ceiling shone directly above. He shot an anxious glance toward the entrance. Where were the Yuzum? He couldn't avoid this angry behemoth much longer. No time to worry about anything other than himself now. It was crawling for him once more. A quick glance at the ceiling, a quicker decision, and then he was swinging the lightsaber at the pillar's base. Like an X-wing in atmosphere, the incredible energy beam sliced through the black stone. A rumbling noise followed, punctuated by explosive crackings. Halla, Leia, run, he yelled. Then he was sprinting to join them. Lumbering toward them, the lizard creature never noticed the cracks in the ceiling overhead. They spread, multiplied, joined, and then the pillar disintegrated, bringing a section of roof as wide as the existing gap down on top of the monster. Gigantic blocks of curved stone crushed its front end to pulp, stilling the toothy grin forever. As the rumbling echoes of the collapse subsided and the black dust began to settle, Luke, panting, paused to look behind him. There was no sign of the front end of the beast. It was buried completely beneath tons of volcanic rock. Twitching hind legs clawed futilely at the air for a while. The massive scimitar tail smashed at the ground. Before very long, all movement ceased. What happened to Hin and Ki, he finally asked. The thing had me cornered. I could have been a short meal. They're probably arguing, the princess essayed in disgust. She eyed the entrance. Pretty soon they'll remember what they were sent for. Then they'll come rushing back in, begging your forgiveness. I'll ball them out then, Luke sighed. Right now I'm, he glanced around for Halla, saw her moving at a trot toward the distant idol. Halla! Let her go, the princess advised him, with an indifferent wave of one hand. She's not running anywhere with it. She started walking toward the far side of the temple. She'll need our help to get it down anyway. When Luke didn't follow, she wondered aloud, aren't you coming, too? In a minute, he assured her, his attention behind instead of in front of him. I want to make certain this thing is dead. As the princess strolled without hurry toward the statue, he moved to stand next to the visible portion of the Hulk corpse. He prodded it with his saber, sinking the shaft of azure destruction into dark flesh up to the hilt. It didn't stir. Satisfied, he turned to rejoin his companions. There was a faint, warning rumble and his gaze jerked skyward. So did those of the princess and Halla. Luke, they shouted simultaneously. He didn't need urging. What he did need was a second or two. The edges of the new hole in the ceiling were widening slightly. Fate gave him the first second, begrudged him the second. Luke. The princess was running toward him now as the rumbling stopped and the last small stone fell heavily. Halla stood frozen, torn between the pile of rubble beneath which Luke was buried and the tantalizing proximity of the crystal. Drunk with its nearness, she continued on toward the statue. Leia reached the small hillock of fresh broken rock, looked around frantically. Over, here, a voice murmured, slow and full of pain. He lay nearby, pinned on his back. She shifted debris from him, ignoring the cloying dust and the scratches the sharp fragments made on her hands and arms. But she couldn't budge the massive block which had struck the temple floor and then tumbled to rest on his right thigh and calf. Try again, he instructed her. They strained together. Leia put her back beneath one edge of the stone, thrust upward with what little weight she had. The block did not move. They rested, breathing hard. Luke's face was a mixture of fading pain and hope. It's not pressing on me with its full weight, he told her. If it was I wouldn't have a leg to pull free now. His gaze turned toward the silent entrance. Damn it, where are those two? They could move this thing easily. I am afraid your slow-witted companions will no longer be able to help you or anyone else, Skywalker. Luke went cold all over. At all blood-chilling shape stood on top of the rubble in the entranceway. Clad completely in black armor, it stared down at them expectantly. 
They're both dead, it informed them pleasantly, in a voice devoid of any spark of humanity. I killed them. As for your droids, they are conditioned to obey orders. I had them turn themselves off. Slowly Leia's mouth moved, forming a name. But no sound issued from between those perfect lips. Moving leisurely down the pile of rubble, Darth Vader addressed them in a coldly conversational tone. You know, Skywalker, I had a difficult time finding out that it was you who shot up my TIE fighter above the Death Star station. Rebellion spies are hard and expensive to come by. I also found out it was you who released the torpedo that destroyed the station. You have a great deal to atone for to me. I've waited a long time. Casually he drew his own lightsaber, began swinging the activated energy blade loosely back and forth, chopping playfully at bits of stone and carving. You were lucky that time in the snub ship, he went on, as Luke fought to pull his pinioned leg free. He dug at the stone floor until blood ran from beneath his nails. I probably won't have the patience to let you last as long as you deserve. You may consider yourself lucky. His voice dropped to a toxic whisper. I expect no such difficulty in restraining myself where you are concerned, Leia Organa. In several ways, you are responsible for my setbacks much more than this simple boy. Monster, was all she could spit out, furious and afraid. Do you remember that day back on the station, Vader mused, with deliberate patience, when the late Governor Tarkin and I interviewed you? He placed a peculiar stress on the word interviewed. Leia had both hands on opposite shoulders and was shivering as if from intense cold. Yes, Vader observed, perverse amusement in his voice, I can see that you do. I am truly sorry I have nothing as elaborate to treat you to at this time. However, he added, swinging his weapon lightly, one can do some interesting things with a saber, you know. I'll do my best to show you all of them if you'll cooperate by not passing out. Leia's hands dropped to her sides. The fear did not leave her, but she forced it into the back alleys of her mind by sheer will. Running the few steps to Luke's side, she knelt and groped at his wrist. When she rose, she was holding the lightsaber carefully in one hand. Vader looked on approvingly. You're going to fight. Good. That will make it interesting. She spat at the advancing giant, a pitifully feeble gesture as she brandished the lightsaber. The force give me leave to kill you before I die, she snarled. An awful coughing laugh issued from behind the gargoylish breath mask. Foolish infant. The force is with me, not you. But, he shrugged amiably, we will see. He assumed a position of readiness. Come, girl woman, amuse me. Grimly determined, mouth clenched, she moved toward him. As she did so Vader abruptly let his arm fall, let the lambent beam of his saber hang limply at his side. Leia, don't. Luke yelled to her. It's a feint, his daring you. Kill me, then yourself, it's hopeless now. Vader looked over at Luke contemptuously, then back at the princess. Go on, he told her, let him fight for you if you want. But I won't let you kill him. I've been robbed too often. Leia appeared to hesitate, then lunged straight at Vader with the tip of the saber. Simultaneously the Dark Lord brought his own beam up in a lightning gesture to parry hers. But Leia performed a spinning, twisting arc in the air and brought her saber down in a slashing flare of blue light. Energy flashed as it contacted the Dark Lord's armored breath mask. Only superhuman reflexes enabled him to avoid the full effect of the blow. If there was anyone in the vast chamber more surprised than Vader, it was Luke. He fought to free his trapped leg with a slight twinge of hope. Almost, little princess, almost, Vader murmured without anger. I have been guilty of overconfidence before. He adjusted his stance. I will not be guilty again. His saber curled in, around, down. She barely managed to deflect the blow as she backpedaled. Again he advanced, swung, again she deflected the cart. They dueled on, with Vader steadily pressing his attack. It required every bit of skill and strength the princess possessed for her simply to defend herself. 
there was no thought of mounting an assault of her own. One occupant of the temple chamber was not watching the fight. High above and far away from the duelists, Halla stood at face level with a pulsing, multifaceted crimson crystal as big as her head. With trembling hands she reached out, caressed it. A twist and pull brought it out of its socket in the statue with unexpected ease. For a long moment she held the jewel in both hands, gazing deeply into a luminescence that was almost alive. Then she was picking her way back down the juts and thrusts of the idol, clutching the crystal tight to her bosom with her right hand. Vader cut down, the princess brought her saber up yet once more to parry, and Vader at the last instant changed his swing. The tip of the energy beam slashed across her midsection, slicing through her minor suit to leave a black burn across her middle. She winced in pain, grabbed at the wound with her free hand. Vader allowed her no respite, continued to press forward. Luke's efforts to pull himself free had left him as firmly pinned as ever, and utterly exhausted. He lay on the ground, fighting to get his breath and energy back, forced to watch helplessly as Vader continued his game of cat and mouse with the princess. Another intricate swing and thrust. This time his saber cut across her cheek, leaving another ugly scorch mark. Tears came as her hand went to her burned cheek. She was moving more and more slowly now, the hand holding Luke's lightsaber shaking uncertainly. Come, Princess Senator Organa, where is your noble fortitude, your traitor's determination? Vader taunted her. Surely a few little burns cannot hurt so much. Enraged, she swung the saber at him with fresh strength. Without straining, he blocked it completely and continued to move on to cut at her again. Though she blocked it, the force of the blow sent her tumbling, rolling to the ground. Vader followed relentlessly as she tried to crawl away and regain her feet. His saber drew a long black gash down the back of her left leg. Screaming, she rolled over somehow and ended up standing. Then she moved away from him with a limp, favoring the damaged leg. Unable to watch any longer, Luke had his head buried in his hands. Clink, a sound of rock on rock. Raising his head and turning, he looked behind him. The sound was repeated. He tried to see around the stone trapping him. A hand, seemingly independent of arm or body, worked its way with infinite slowness and determination over the side of the big block of volcanic stone. It was followed by a head. A terrible wound showed halfway through the upper portion of the skull. Hin. Luke called softly, hardly daring to breathe. A quick glance showed Vader still fully intent on the princess. The fatally injured Yuzum put a hand to its snout, ordering Luke to silence. Crawling on hands and knees, Hin came around the stone until he was beneath an overhanging edge. Backing up against the supporting rocks, he started to rise. Massive bristled shoulders pressed upward against the long rock, arms strained. The boulder did not move, and Hin fell to the floor. His breathing was labored, his eyes half-closed. Come on, Hin, come on. Luke urged frantically, his gaze traveling from the fight on the floor back to the prone Yuzum. You can move it, just a little is all. Try again, please. Hin blinked, seemed to stare at Luke without seeing him. Moving mechanically, it positioned heavy muscled arms and shoulders underneath the edge once more. Come, little princess. Now is the time for spirit, he admonished her. You still have a chance. He stalked her as she backed from him, threatening her with false cuts and thrusts that she tried to block feebly while limping on her damaged leg. Stand and fight, he urged her. Another downward swing of the lethal saber, this one cutting across her chest and through the suit. The princess sucked in her breath with an agonized gasp, bent over and almost fell. Vader moved toward her. There came a grinding sound loud enough to cause both of them to look up. With a final effort Hin had shoved the huge stone block aside. He fell in a heap, the life already draining from him, as Luke desperately scrambled clear. The pressure on his leg had been just enough to restrain him, not enough to damage it. He was running toward the two combatants, favoring his right leg but feeling it grow stronger with every step. Leia! 
She still retained enough presence of mind to switch off the saber before throwing it to him even as Vader grabbed to intercept the weapon. The Dark Lord missed it by a finger length, caught the princess instead. But the throw was weak. Luke tried to run faster, found his still sore leg hobbled him slightly. Vader growled something unintelligible, shoved the princess away from him with his free hand. She fell to the hard floor, lay there panting, exhausted. Luke saw Vader closing the distance between them. The Dark Lord would reach the lightsaber first. He sprinted somehow, threw himself at the ground. He felt reborn as his fist closed around the saber haft, then he rolled with renewed vigor to his right. Vader's blow was an instant late, cutting a deep furrow in the stone floor where Luke had fallen. Then Luke was on his feet, the saber now shining bright blue in his hand. His role had taken him behind Vader. He stood between the Dark Lord and the Princess. Vader regarded him silently. Leia? No answer. He glanced backward. Princess? A thin, sorrowful voice. Don't worry about me, Luke. Vader appeared to inhale deeply. No, Skywalker, he rumbled, don't worry about her. Worry about yourself. Luke felt a wild sense of elation as he brandished his father's weapon. I'm not worried about anything, Vader. Not now. I have no more worries and only one concern. His voice held an unaccustomed hint of conviction. I'm going to kill you, Darth Vader. That humorless laugh again. What a high opinion you hold of yourself, Skywalker. I'm... I'm Ben Kenobi, Luke whispered in an odd way. For just a moment Vader seemed shaken. Ben Kenobi's dead. I killed him myself. You are simple Luke Skywalker, an ex-farm boy from Tatooine. You are no master of the Force and the equal of Ben Kenobi you will never be. Ben Kenobi is with me, Vader, Luke snarled, gaining confidence every second, and the Force is with me, too. You do have something of the Force about you, boy, Vader admitted. A master of it you are not, however. That dooms you. Only a master could do, this. The Dark Lord lunged and Luke spun well clear. At the same time, Vader was staring not at Luke, but at the ground. A small fragment of the fallen ceiling rose, shot straight for Luke's head. Seeing it coming, he reacted as Kenobi had taught him, without thinking. A much smaller stone lifted and intersected the path of the charging rock. The two met. Though Vader's missile was by far the larger, it was deflected just enough by Luke's rock to send it shooting past his shoulder harmlessly. Panting, he stared challengingly back at Vader. Good, boy, the Dark Lord confessed, very good. But my stone was the heavier. My powers are the stronger. Not strong enough, Vader, Luke insisted as he lunged forward. His thoughts were of Kenobi, of the techniques of saber and force the old Jedi Knight had laboriously taught him. He tried to let the force guide his arm. Vader parried, blocked, parried again, and found himself being forced backward by the aggressiveness and skill of Luke's demonic attack. The breath mask tilted back for a second. A section of heavy bar relief on one of the supporting pillars was loosened, fell away. At the last instant Luke sensed it, jumped backward. The huge carved panel shattered between them. Both men rested uneasily as the dust settled. Luke gulped for air, while Vader showed less aplomb and increasing tension. You are good, Skywalker, he declared. Very good indeed, for a child. But the end will be the same. He raised his saber and came charging over the broken panel. Now it was the Dark Lord who initiated the assault. Luke found himself forced steadily backward as Vader threw an unceasing blizzard of stone shards and saber cuts at him. It was impossible to counter them all. Somehow Luke did so. They were circling in the center of the temple floor now. Lying on her side, the princess tried to turn and watch. The pain of her wounds rose about her like a steel wall. Around her thoughts the wall closed, 
and in response her eyes closed and she slumped back to the cold, cold stone. Again the two enemies paused, only now it was Vader who was panting heavily. Kenobi, trained you, well, the Dark Lord admitted admiringly. Some of his usual insouciance had been drained by the steady fighting. And you have some, natural ability of your own. You have proven a challenge. I enjoy, a challenge. Still unhurt, Luke whispered defiantly, too much of, a challenge for, you. No, Vader assured him, no. You overestimate yourself, child. The Dark Lord drew himself up to his full, awesome height. I have finished playing with you. Swinging his saber until it was no more than a blue blur in the dank air of the temple, he leaped straight up into the air. It was more than a jump, less than levitation. Out of the blue circle of energy he flung the saber. Instinctively, he had no time to think, Luke parried. The force inherent in the throne saber knocked Luke's out of his hand. Both weapons flew off to the right and lay, still gleaming, still activated, on the ground, near a dark circular opening that gaped black in the floor. As Vader drifted slowly back to the floor he grabbed his right wrist with his left hand, made a fist, and seemed to convulse like a man retching. A ball of pure white energy the size of his fist materialized in front of Vader's hands and moved down toward the wide-eyed Luke. Something made Luke realize he could never reach his saber before the white globe touched him. He threw up both hands and looked away. So he didn't see what happened. His hands seemed to blur. The white globe struck them, bounced back, and contacted Vader gently as the latter touched the ground. There was a soft crack as of an explosion far in the distance. Vader was knocked head over heels and the globe vanished. But when the white energy ball had touched Luke's hands, the power inherent in the kinetite, or restrained energy globe, had thrown him to the ground. Had he resisted it unsuccessfully it would have thrown him across the chamber and through the temple wall. Now he lay on his belly while Vader rolled slowly onto his side, shaking his head in disbelief. His eyes refocused, to see a shaken but otherwise unharmed Luke crawling slowly toward his lightsaber. Not, possible. Vader muttered, starting to crawl toward his own weapon. The left side of his body armor was dented inward as if by a giant's fist, where the kinet tight had struck. Such power, in a child. Not. Possible. Luke had neither the strength nor the desire to argue. He saw only the saber, felt only its smooth handle fitting compactly into his palm. But by then Vader had reached his own weapon. With a supreme effort he tottered to his feet, turned to face Luke. Holding his father's saber over his head, Luke rose, rushed at the Dark Lord and threw himself on the towering black figure. There was a blinding flash of light as he made contact with Vader's saber beam and slid on through with the blow. His saber continued downward, pierced the stone floor. Luke's hand struck a rock and jarred his saber loose. He hit the ground hard, then rolled onto his back to see what had happened. What he saw was Vader staring at the floor. His right arm lay there, still gripping the glowing saber. There was less blood than Luke would have expected. He tried to rise, failed. He no longer retained the strength to climb to his knees, let alone to regain his feet. So he lay there completely exhausted. Slowly, in uneven, unsteady steps, the Dark Lord tottered to his severed arm. Amazingly, he bent down and lifted the amputated limb, detached the saber from it. Holding it in his left, he turned to face Luke. It was useless, he thought, as Vader raised the saber over his head with his one remaining hand. The Dark Lord, Lord of the Sith, master of the dark side of the Force, was invincible. It was over. I'm sorry, he murmured, turning his head to where the princess lay crumpled on the temple floor. I'm sorry, Leia. I loved you. He looked back up and found he hadn't the strength for a last curse. The saber soared above and behind Vader's head. The Dark Lord staggered drunkenly forward. He stumbled a couple of steps to the left. And disappeared. A dissonant, inhuman howling marked the descent of the Dark Lord down the black circle to Luke's right. 
Frowning painfully, hardly daring to believe, Luke crawled slowly over to the rim of the black circle, peered in and down. He could not see the bottom of the pit, nor any sign of Darth Vader. He's gone, he mumbled, dazed, hardly daring to believe it. Gone down to where he belongs, I hope. He looked across the floor as he struggled to sit up, balancing himself on one arm. Leia, I did it. He's gone, Leia. And yet. There remained a stirring, a faint tremor in the force, so light he could barely sense it, like a bad aftertaste in the mouth. But it was there. Vader was alive. Yet Vader was no threat to them. That was enough for him now. He was sobbing as he dragged his exhausted body across the floor. Leia, Leia. Reaching her, he extended a questing palm, touched her forehead. She opened her eye and looked back at him. His tears fell uncontrollably as he probed gingerly at the terrible scars Vader's saber had left on her body, her face. Luke, she breathed, barely audible. She smiled at him, painfully. Taking her hand in his own, he slumped to the ground at her side. At the top of the rubble blocking the temple entrance, Halla stopped to peer behind her. She saw the two figures lying hand in hand in the middle of the temple floor. Of the Dark Lord of the Sith there was no sign. She'd seen him fall down the sacrificial well of Pomajima's worshippers. She was free to go. Her gaze turned downward, to stare into the glowing abyssal crimson of the Kyber crystal, then moved out to peer into the fog and mist of Mimbun. The personnel carrier they'd arrived in waited out there. Hidden in it lay Key, felled forever by a blow from Darth Vader. Luke's two droids sat motionless and deactivated nearby. Damn, she murmured to herself. Or, oh, damn. Then she was scrambling down the pile of broken stone, back into the temple. Luke. She propped the limp form up, stared into the somnolent face. Luke boy. Come on, you're frightening old Halla. Eyes opened, turned to squint at her. Halla. She licked her lips, looked skyward, then placed the crystal in his lap, shoving it at him as if it were burning here. Here. I can't do much with it. I'm a faker, a charlatan of the force, not a master. So I could do bigger and better parlor tricks. I'd waste it, and the Empire would find me soon anyway. Luke moved his gaze from her down to the pulsing silicate in his lap. The crystal magnifies the force. He chuckled, choked. What did is that now? I don't know, she shouted angrily. You wanted it, well there it is, damn it. What more do you want of me? What more can I do? She shook both hands at him, furious at her own helplessness. Nothing, Halla. He smiled gently at her. There's nothing more to be done, I guess. He reached down, fondled the crystal. It feels warm, good. You're crazy, she snorted. It's a cold hunk of rock. No, it's warm, he insisted. Funny kind of warmth. Unconscious, he fell back, both hands still clamped tightly around the crystal. Halla stood, turned away. Stupid old woman, she cursed herself. Stupid, selfish old woman. I should have helped them when it might have done some good. I should have. She hesitated, frowned uneasily. Was it growing lighter in the shadow temple? She turned, and her eyes bulged. Luke's motionless form was enveloped in a rich, red bath of light. In his hands the crystal shone with a brilliance unnatural. Nor was the light still. It shifted, fluttered, ran over him like a live thing. It sought out every extremity, each finger and follicle like the Saint Elmo's fire of old on the rigging of a sailing ship. After several long, rapturous moments the radiant envelope shrank, sucked up by the crystal which resumed its normal coloring. Luke sat up so abruptly that Halla was unable to repress a short screech. He blinked once, looked at her. Hesitantly, as though she were about to greet a ghost, she edged toward him. Luke boy, she husked querulously. Halla. What happened? I. 
His head turned, his eyes coming to rest on the silent pit which had swallowed Darth Vader. I remember that. I also remember. Halla, I died. You must have found it boring, she replied without smiling. It was the crystal, something in the crystal. The force. Don't remember, he insisted, shaking his head dully. Then he reached down and touched the princess's shoulder. Leia? You were holding the crystal, Halla explained slowly. In both hands. Remember the old legends, how the temple priests could heal? I don't understand, Luke murmured. But he hefted the crystal again in both hands, closed his eyes and tried to concentrate and relax at the same time. The glow from the crystal intensified. I understand, came a voice out of Luke's body that might or might not have been Luke's. The crimson glow emerged from the crystal again. It started up Luke's arms, only to halt at the elbows. Holding the crystal with one hand, he opened his eyes. Like a man sleepwalking he reached down. One fingertip touched the princess's face, traced the scar left by Vader's saber. As he traced it with the red glow, the scar vanished. Halla could see the skin moving, folding, healing behind it. Slowly, wordlessly, as a rapt Halla watched, Luke proceeded to trace each of the wounds Vader had inflicted on the princess. When he finished the final one, he placed his open palm first for a lingering moment over her heart, then her forehead. Then he sat back. The glow from the crystal subsided to normal. Several more minutes passed. Uninjured, her beauty restored, Leia Organa slowly sat up. Both hands went to her head. Are you all right, Leia? He asked solicitously. She winced, stared at him. Luke, I have the most awful headache. Headache, he echoed. He turned, smiled at Halla. She has a headache. Halla grinned back at him, chuckled, then was roaring with relieved laughter. Luke joined in, his embarrassed, happy laughing interrupted only by an occasional cough. The crystal had repaired his injured insides, but he was still oxygen weak. The princess looked suddenly uncertain. She glanced down at herself. Events returned with a rush as she felt of her leg, her face. They're gone, she murmured in disbelief. Healed. How? Luke turned serious. It was the crystal, Leia. It healed me, healed you, and I wasn't even aware it was doing so. Everything that Halla surmised about it is true. It does use the force. The crystal healed you, Leia, not me. Now, Luke boy, Halla admonished him, you were the agent the crystal worked through. Without you, wouldn't be nothing but rock. Luke, we. Leia stopped, stared around nervously. What about? Luke reassured her. Down there. He indicated the pit. I never heard him hit bottom. Vader's finished, Leia. Yet, even as he said it, there was that peculiar tingling in the force again, like a smell of sulfur. She shattered that unwholesome train of thought. What about 3PO, and R2? They're all right, Halo responded. Leastwise, they looked fine to me when I was just now, uh, checking out the crawler to make sure it hadn't been booby-trapped by your Dark Lord. They're turned off, but no damage that I can see. Luke sighed with relief, put an arm around Leia. She didn't move to shrug it off. Here, he said, handing the crystal to Halla. She eyed him uncertainly, then took it, held it with reverence. You might as well keep it for a while, since you're coming with us. With you? Halla looked wary. What do you want with a tired, old woman? What good would I do you? A world of good, Luke assured her. A universe of good. We'll get you safely off Mimban with us. Then, if you still don't feel like joining the cause of a bunch of outlaws, you don't have to. He thought wistfully. I know another man, a smuggler and a pirate, who once thought the same way as you. Don't compare me with any smugglers, and don't rush me, she instructed him crossly. I might be persuaded, 
The Force knows what you want with me, though. But where am I going with you? Luke looked down at Leia, smiled. She leaned into his side and smiled in return. We're going to Sakapa's 4, he informed her. We're late for a very important date. He turned to look at her. With an underground movement. We'll make an idealistic revolutionary out of you yet, Halla. Not likely, she snorted. But she didn't object further as she followed them outside the temple of Pomajima. Back on the crawler, Luke adjusted the necessary switches. R2 came back on first, followed by a startled 3PO. Oh, sir. Where is he? We couldn't escape him. He knew all the proper code words and commands. I tried to warn you, sir, but we couldn't, he stopped, stared at them. Why are you all smiling? R2 beeped in exasperation. For a droid whose specialty was communicating, C-3PO could be mighty slow on the uptake. I beg your pardon, sir, the tall, slim droid continued politely, but have I missed something important? R2, start us up. We're getting out of here. The little D2 unit plugged into the crawler's ignition. Immediately, the engine responded. Halla swung the massive machine around, plunged, into the surrounding jungle mists and cries of Mimban. Why, the faint, receding voice of a certain droid could be heard to say, do I have the impression that everyone is laughing at me?